Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, good evening, and welcome to uh, an, another edition of um, Destiny Teachings on Destiny. Today, I'm just going to teach and say a few things and um, expand on a few points about the subject of destiny and the subject of purpose. And um, today, we're going to start off from First um, Corinthians chapter two. But um, I'll start from verse 9. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, let me start reading. But as it is written, I, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Now I need to point out today that purpose is discovered. So the first thing you need to understand is that purpose is discovered. And uh, for you to discover purpose, you need to go to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer himself is the Lord Jesus. The manufacturer is God himself. So for you to understand your purpose, for you to really walk and start walking in the fullness of your purpose you need to have that communication with God. Now, if you look at uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse um, 8, it says, But I, as, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the, into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You see, the things that God had prepared for them that love him. You see, some of the things that God has prepared for you, some of the things that God wants you to do and to achieve and to excel at, many times you are not even aware of it. Many times it is not visible to the physical eyes. Many times it, there is no sign of what God has even called you to do. Do you see what I'm saying? It is not what you see by the physical eyes. It is not what you can hear by your physical hearing. But the Bible says that God hath revealed it unto us. In other words, sometimes, many times, most times, it is hidden from you, but God reveals it unto you. But look at it, verse 10. It said, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Now that is a key there. The only way you can know about your purpose, the only way you can know what God has called you to do is the fact that God reveals it unto you by his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the executor of the New Testament. Jesus died. Uh, he, he died. He, he was buried and he rose up. Do you see what I'm saying? And when he rose up, he ascended into heaven uh, and sat at the right hand of God. But the Bible says he told the disciples that wait until you receive power from on high. So when the Holy Spirit came on earth, the Holy Spirit is the distributor of the gifts and the callings. He is the one that shows you what God has given unto you. Do you see the importance of the Holy Spirit? The Bible says it has been revealed unto us by His Spirit. Now look at, let's, let's, let's continue. He says, For the Spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is aware of what God has put into you. 
The Holy Spirit is aware of the gifts, the talents, and the potential that God has deposited in you. Do you see the importance of the Holy Spirit? He is the executor. He is the one that carries out the, 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 the instructions. He's the one that energizes you to carry out the assignment that God has given unto you. This is what I'm saying. He energizes you. He is the spiritual energy. The Bible calls him the paracletos. The word paracletos means one that is called alongside to help. He is the energy. He is the one that energizes you, spirit, soul, and body, to carry out the assignment of God. Now let's continue. Now the spirit of God knows everything about God. He knows. He said, he knows the deep things of God. He said, now, verse 11 says, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him. Now, do you see that combination? The spirit of God knows everything. He knows the things of God. But your human spirit knows about you. He knows everything about you. He knows your gifts, your talents. He under your, your human spirit understands everything. Uh, but you see what the, 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 the thing about it now is that the Holy Spirit now indwelling your human spirit. The Holy Spirit, the source of all knowledge. And now what happens now is that your human spirit, when you begin to walk in the, in the, in the purpose of God, when you, be, you begin to walk in, the, in your potential, when you begin to walk in destiny, the Spirit of God, through your human spirit, begins to look for every avenue to see that what God has called you to do comes to pass. Your spirit begins to look for avenues, begins to look for ways. Why? Because your spirit knows the things that pertain to you. But the spirit of God knows the things that pertain to God. The spirit of God knows and understands the plans, the purposes, and the pursuits of God. And therefore, the Holy Spirit now injects that or downloads that purpose, that plan into your human spirit and that is where you now begin to pick it up. And that's where ideas begin to come. And that is where instruction begins to come. Now let's, let's, let's continue. This is getting more interesting. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world for, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Our human spirits is the one that knows. Now we really now need to be aware of what is within us. Do you see what I'm saying? Now the Holy Spirit indwells our human spirit, you see, but through the uh, human spirit, we now begin to pick up the things that God has called us to do. Do you see the agency of the Holy Spirit? Do you see that the Holy Spirit is indispensable? Do you see that you cannot do without the Holy Spirit? But you also need to remember that you are first of all a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a human body. And so you are first of all a spirit. And so the things that God has called you to do can only be revealed spiritually. The things that God has called you to do can only be revealed spiritually. However, there are certain pointers that can help you on your way. There are certain things that can help you that you can see when the Holy Spirit, through your spirit, opens your eyes. Paul prayed the prayer in Ephesians. He said that my God might give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This is a prayer, a New Testament prayer that every believer should pray on a regular and a consistent basis. Why? Because when the eyes of your understanding is enlightened and is opened, you know those things that God wants you to do. The Bible says in Colossians, he said that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Ha <laughs> ha! He said that you might walk worthy of God. 
Hallelujah. You might walk worthy of God and growing, growing also in God. Oh my God. Walking worthy of God and growing up in God as well. You might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge, you don't know what God wants you to be filled with what He wants you to do. He wants you to know what He wants you to do. God is not schizophrenic, God is not uh, imbalanced. God wants you to know what you are supposed to do with your life. Colossians tells us, He said that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. That was the prayer of Paul. Now, let's quickly go to Colossians. Let me go. Uh, I didn't plan for that, but I love that scripture. I love that scripture. But look at Colossians chapter 1, verse, uh, verse, um, verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we had, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that he might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now look at this. Look at verse 11. Strengthened with all might. In other words, why you know all of these things, you need spiritual strength and physical strength to carry out the assignment. Strength with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. My goodness. He wants you to be filled with the knowledge of his will. He wants you to be filled with what you are supposed to do. He wants you to become aware of it. But guess what? He wants you also to be strengthened. Hallelujah! He wants you to be strengthened with all might, hallelujah. That I don't have a transition talks. The Bible says that he said, he said, he said you, 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 that, that you might be strengthened. Can you imagine? You need to be strengthened with all spiritual strength. Hallelujah. That you might be strengthened with all might. Strengthened with all spiritual, that you might be energized from within. That's what it means. That you might be energized from within. That you might be energized from within. There is something about the energy of the Holy Spirit that enables you to accomplish what you are called to do. There is something about that energy. That you might be strengthened with all might. That you might be strengthened with spiritual energy. My goodness, that you might be strengthened with spiritual energy. Ah, when the Holy Spirit came on the apostles, they became different men. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish the assignment that God has called you to do. If you are not aware of this, you will feel woefully and fall flat on your face. Hallelujah. Man, I'm excited. I'm preaching myself happy. I'm preaching myself happy. So look at it. Uh, in First Corinthians, if you go back to First Corinthians, he, he, he wants you to know. He said, I has not said, ear has not heard what God has, has prepared for them that love him. God is not schizophrenic. God is not emotionally imbalanced. God wants you to know what he has called you to do. But very quickly, I'm going to uh, uh, point out certain things about purpose. A, a few things uh, that will show you and point to you uh, what God has called you to do. Uh, Paul was telling Timothy that Timothy should not neglect the gift that is in him. Another translation says he should fan into flame the gift that is in him. Uh, the Bible says somewhere, it said, uh, uh, the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Do you see what I'm saying? God called you. God equipped you. God put that potential in you. He is not going to turn back from it. You might die without discovering it. You might die without being aware of it. You might die without fully realizing it. But the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. 
Well, now, three things I'm going to say uh, very quickly before we close today uh, that, that will help you locate yourself. I, I'll try and put, uh, you know, I'll at least say at least three things. If we have more time, I'll, I'll put in maybe one or two more. Number one, what would you enjoy doing if you are not even paid for it? It's one of the pointers that is one of the clues to some of the things that God has called you to do. There are certain things that you enjoy doing that God has gifted you with, that even when you are not paid for it, you will still do it. That's a pointer. What would you enjoy doing if you are not even paid for it? Hmm. Another pointer is, what do you do with ease? There are certain things that you do with so much ease, it's effortless. Whereas when somebody, if somebody attempts to do that same thing, they struggle at it. What have you noticed within your life? You need to do an inventory of the things that you do and you do it with so much ease. Why? Because it's a part of you. Now imagine if you now develop that gift. Imagine how much you will develop and how much you will grow uh, with that gift. What do you do with it? ease? All right? Uh, another pointer is, what do you do best? What do you do that when you do it, you get better at it? What do you do that when you do it, you get better? Every time you do it, you improve. Every time you do it, you improve. You are so good. You are so gifted. You are so talented. You are so loaded with potential that when you carry out that task, when you carry out that uh, that. Uh, that uh, 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 that assignment uh, in in your area of strength, you improve. I've noticed that about myself. There is a, there are certain things that when I do them, I get better and better and better at it. And so I concentrate on my strength, and I hire out my weakness. You see that? I concentrate on my strength, and I hire out my weakness. So I don't try and develop my weakness. I make sure I develop my strength uh, to the ultimate as much as I can do. All right. So those three things. What do you do best? What would you enjoy doing if you are not even paid for it? What do you do with ease? Until next time, uh, when I come your way with some nuggets again, my name is Sydney Sunny, and it's been nice. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.